You know, that's got to be really hard, playing the piano and praying at the same time. That's kind of like chewing bubble gum and walking at the same time. It could be tough. If you have your Bible, Psalm 119, verse 17. Psalm 119, verse 17. And uh, the 119th Psalm is a, is a familiar uh, Psalm in the Bible. It's the longest uh, chapter of the Bible. Uh, you may know that it's broken up into several sections, each section beginning with the same letter. Every sentence begins with the same letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, it was uh, designed that way as, a, uh, as an instrument of, of memorization, and uh, children had, Hebrew children would have to memorize the 119th Psalm. And the theme of the 119th Psalm is the Word of God. And uh, the, it, there are several words that are used to describe God's Word in Psalm 119. Uh, word, commandment, law, uh, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, but the theme is the, of Psalm 119 is the Word of God. There are some things in life that, it, that, that before we can see them, God must open our eyes to see them. And if God doesn't op open our eyes to see them, we will never see them, no matter how hard we try um, uh, God has to open our eyes to, to those things. I, I, uh, I, I love the, the, the account, and I've, I've mentioned it a few times uh, over the last many months, uh, the account of um, uh, the, the, the war going on between Israel and Aram, and Elisha the prophet makes the Aramean king mad, and he, he surrounds Dothan at night. And uh, uh, Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, wakes up early in the morning, and he goes out, and all he sees is uh, uh, the Arameans. And he goes back in fear to Elisha, and you re remember Elisha prays, and he says, God, open his eyes. Open his eyes. And, uh, you know, it describes how when God opens Gehazi's eyes, uh, he's able to see that the mountains, that the, 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 the mountains are full of, of, of angels, uh, well, how, how do you see a, a flaming army of angels? So through the revelation of God, and that, that's the only way. You know, some, some things are just like that. Uh, John 6, 44, remember Jesus, um, uh, Jesus says, uh, no one can come to me unless the Father draws them. Uh, that, that's what he says. So, so how, how, what's required to come to Jesus? The drawing of the Father. Some things are just like that. Uh, this evening, what we see in Psalm 119, verse 17 and onward, is we, we, we see a third thing that if we are to, uh, if we are to understand God's Word, that's only going to happen in one way, and that's going to be through the revelation of God. Um. And so that's what the psalmist is praying for here. He's praying that God would, would reveal to him the truth of, of what he's reading and the, 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 the point of what he's reading and the wisdom of what he's reading. And spiritual truth can only be discerned by spiritual means. And so the psalmist is praying for that here. So if you, if you have your Bible, look with me, if you will, Psalm 119. Verse 17. Psalm 119, verse 17. Deal bountifully with your servant, that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes, that I may behold wonderful things from your law. You praying that? Hope you are. Open my eyes, that I may see wonderful things from your law. I'm a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is crushed with longing. After, uh, after your ordinances at all times, you rebuke the arrogant and the cursed who wander from your commandments. Take away reproach and contempt from me. For I observe your testimonies. Even though princes sit and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Your testimonies also are my delight. They are my counselors. So what we see here is we see 
uh, the psalmist, uh, there's a prayer and there's a proclamation. There's a prayer and there's a proclamation. And that prayer is, God, open my eyes to your word. That's the prayer. God, open my eyes to your, to, to your word. And the proclamation is, when God does that, I'm going to meditate upon it. The prayer is, God, open my eyes to your word. Open my eyes to the truth of your word. Uh, Open my eyes. That's the prayer. And the proclamation is, God, as you do that, as God does that in my life, I'm going to meditate upon it. I'm going to dwell upon it. So the the prayer and the the proclamation. So so first we see the prayer. In in verse 18, we, we see it. Open my eyes that I may behold. Open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things from your law. I am a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. So, so why did the psalmist need to ask this? Why did the psalmist need to ask this? Well, imagine reading a, a page of a book and asking, what did the author mean by that? Imagine reading a page of a book. What did the author mean by that? And you, you, are, you are left to wonder unless the, the author just happens to be sitting next to you. And if the author is sitting next to you, then you can just ask the author. Well, as we read God's Word, the author's in us, right? The author's in us. And so the author can reveal to us the truth of what what we are reading. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 through 14, the Apostle Paul says this. He says, God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given to us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit expressing spiritual truths with spiritual words. The the man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Spiritual truths cannot be understood until the author opens our eyes. Once our eyes are open, the truth of God's Word will, will change our lives. And we, we, we see this throughout the Bible. Hebrews 4.12 says this, For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to the dividing of the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. 1 Peter 1, 23 through 25, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of, uh, not of, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass and all of their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fail or fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. God has given us his word and his desire, and God has given us his spirit and God's desire, God's intention is to use his spirit to continually to reveal the truth of his word. And so we always come to the word of God with a sense of dependency, with a sense of dependency, knowing, knowing without a doubt that unless God reveals the truth of his word to us, we will never understand it. So we always come to to God's word with a sense of dependency, desiring for God to to, to reveal truth to us. And as our eyes are open to spiritual truth, we we are changed forever. But I'd like to I'd like us to see here that uh, that there are I'd like to point out for us five hindrances to understanding the word of God. Five hindrances to understanding. Uh, the Word of God. And, and the first one, and the psalmist mentions it, is arrogance. Arrogance. Notice he says, he says, you rebuke the arrogant, the cursed. Th- this person says, I don't need the Word of God to live my life. Th- th- this person will, 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 will have the truth of the Word hidden from them because of, because of their arrogance. Because of their arrogance. Uh, Ethan, would you turn off the pulpit mic for me? It's, um, um, 
arrogance. And arrogance can be alive and well within the church. So sometimes people, that, that they can have an arrogance thinking, well, I understand that. I understand that. Well, then why don't you do it? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, individuals say, I've been, I, I, I've been coming to this church for 50 years. I understand that. Spiritual truth is spiritually discerned. And God has to open our, our, our eyes and open our hearts and open our minds to what he, he is saying and his will for our lives. Spiritual truth is spiritually discerned. And arrogance can be a hindrance to that for a long time. One of my life verses, I have a handful of them. One of my life verses is James 4, James 4, 6 and 10. Those verses say this, God is opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. That's verse 6. Verse 10 is, therefore, humble yourself in the presence of the Lord, and he will lift you up. And so we come to God's word with a sense of dependency, with, 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 a, with an understanding that if we're to understand it, if we're to understand his will in it, he has to reveal that to us. So arrogance can be a hindrance to, to God's word. The second hindrance would be this. Sin can be a hindrance to understanding God's word. Verse 21, the second part of the verse says, Who wander from your commandments. Who wander from your commandments. This person says, I won't heed the word of God in my life. Unconfessed sin in your life will prevent you from, from communing with a holy God through his holy word. Sin. Sin can be a hindrance for our understanding of the Word of God. Arrogance can be a hindrance for our understanding of the Word of God. A lack of longing can be a third hindrance. And in verse 20, the psalmist says, My soul is crushed with longing for your ordinances at all times. My soul is crushed for longing after your ordinances at all times. Really, the psalmist, is, what he's saying there is, I'm hungry for God's Word. I'm hungry for it. The person who is not, they would say, well, I have enough of the Word of God in my life. But Jesus says in Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. For they will be filled. Proverbs eight seventeen says, I love those who love me. God speaking, he says, I love those who love me, and those who diligently seek me find me. Sadly, we often miss the wonders of God's Word because we, we don't care if we find them or not. A lack of longing, sin, arrogance. The, a fourth hindrance to understanding God's Word uh, is immaturity. It speaks of it in Hebrews 5, 12 through 14. For, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of, of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is not accustomed to the word of righteousness, for he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. You can't learn to spell until you learn the ABCs. You, you, you can't learn to add until you, you learn your numbers. You, you can't learn what, what God has for you tomorrow until you learn what he has for you today. And maturity can be, can be a hindrance to understanding the word of God. And, and, and fifthly, the fifth hindrance would be lostness. Lostness. If God's word has no place in your life, if you have no desire to learn it through teaching, preaching, or personal reading... You, you may need to consider the possibility that you're lost. We commune with God through his word. He's given us his word. And so those are five potential hindrances that would keep us from, uh, from, from hearing and understanding God's word. So the psalmist prays that, he would, that, that God would reveal spiritual truth to him. That, that, that's his prayer. And then he proclaims, the proclamation is this. The, the psalmist proclaims that as the word of God is revealed to him, he will meditate upon it. So look at verse 23. Even though princes sit and talk against me, your servant meditates upon your statutes. Your testimonies also are my delight. They are my counselors. So, so what, do, what does it mean to meditate? 
Well, Eastern religion uses this word to describe an emptying of the mind. But the, 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 that's not the biblical definition at all. The, it, it, in the Bible, meditation isn't the emptying of your mind. Instead, it's the exact opposite. It's the filling of your mind. But the feeling of your mind upon the right things, the feeling of your mind upon the Word of God, a deliberate focus, a deliberate concentration upon the Word of God and the person of God himself. I, I, I love the, this quote. There's a man named Richard Foster. And he, he says this, and it's a little dated. It's a few decades old, but it's even more true today than it was when he wrote it. He says, in contemporary society, our adversary majors in three things, noise, hurry, and crowds. If he, if he can keep us involved in muchness and manyness, he will be satisfied. If we hope to move beyond the superficialities of our culture, including our religious culture, we must be willing to go down into the recreating silences, into the inner world of contemplation. Communion and intimacy with God cannot be done in a hurry. They cannot be done in a hurry. Holiness cannot be accomplished in a hurry. It, it just can't. You, you want to be near God? You want to be hearing from God? That takes time. It, it, it just does. And so the, the psalmist here, he's, he's praying that God would reveal truth to him and then he's proclaiming that as God reveals truth to him, he will meditate upon it. And so, so how that kind of works out practically in our lives is, well, I, I just tell you how it works out practically in my life. Uh, I, I, I read God's Word every day. But not every day do I, do I have this aha, God said that to me moment. But, but I have those regularly. And as I have those, it, it is, I hope, that I don't just say, well, that was a good quiet time and go on with my life. I, I hope that, that those truths that God specifically reveals to me through the reading of His Word, that I internalize those truths. And that I think about them, and I memorize them, and I meditate upon them, and then I'm, I'm thinking about them throughout the day. I'll tell you how it happened today. My sermon I preached this morning, same, someone came up to me after the sermon, and they asked me a question about the sermon. And, well, Daniel, don't you think this actually meant this? And I was like, uh, so, uh, and, man, I spent half an hour today working that out, you know, working that out in my mind. Well, okay, well, you said this, and this is how, the, you know, this is the whole chapter, and, 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 and that's, just, that's just healthy. You know, it's, it's healthy that we, we are reading God's Word in such a way to where we're, we're thinking about it and rolling it over in our minds and seeking to understand it and desiring to understand it, praying that we understand it. So, the, the, His proclamation is, God, as you reveal truth to me, I'll meditate upon it. And I'd like to give us two reasons we should meditate upon it, and we'll close with those. And it's verse 24. So if you have your Bible, no, no, notice what it says in verse 24. Your testimonies are my delight. They are my counselors. Why should we meditate upon the Word of God? We should do it because it is our delight, and it is our counselor. Our delight. You know, God's Word tells us that God created us in His own image. It tells us that God loves us even though we're sinners. It tells us that He loves us so much that His Son died upon a cross for our sins. It tells us that He has prepared a home in heaven for us. It tells us that we will commune with Him in heaven for eternity. It tells us that He is holding on to us way more than we're holding on to Him, and that's good news. That, 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 it's delightful. It's delightful. I mean, as we, as we meditate and dwell and think upon the things that God has said in His Word, it, it should be delightful to us. It should be delightful because God has given us many wonderful promises and accomplished many wonderful things for us. So the truths revealed in His Word are delightful for us. And secondly, the things revealed to us are our counselor. Our counselor. You can look for help in a lot of places. You can flip out your phone and you can look up professional counselor. You can go to a bookstore and pick up a hundred self-help books. But, but before you do that, and those things may have their place. But, but before you do that, be sure that you've consulted the greatest self-help book in the world. The one that has all the answers for life. 
both the life that you live today and the eternal life which is to come. And so what I see the psalmist doing here is I see him praying in a spirit of humility, praying, God, reveal truth to me. Re- reveal truth to me. I see him praying that. And he should do that because spiritual truth is spiritually discerned. And I see him proclaiming or speaking to God and saying, God, as, as you answer my prayer, as you reveal truth to me, I'm going to meditate upon it. And I'm going to meditate upon it because I understand that your word is a delight. And I understand that your word is a counselor. It is an instrument that you have given me to guide me as I live this life that you have given me. Prayer, proclamation, Psalm 119, 17 through 24. Let's have a word of prayer. Actually, before we pray, I'm, I'm going to pray something for something specific, uh, um, and then we'll, we'll pray and be dismissed. Uh, I know some of you have been praying for uh, uh, First Baptist Church Stigler. They called a pastor today. And so uh, uh, I, I, I know that... Uh, I know that after you guys have gotten to know me, you've been asking, what's taking them so long, all right? But, uh, uh, but uh, they, um, uh, it got God's in it, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to see God's hand and uh, move in, in Stigler and, uh, and among our friends and our brothers and sisters in Christ. I know some of y'all have been praying for that and have asked me about it regularly, so I thank y'all for that. I wanted to pass that along. So that's our word of prayer as we close today. Uh, God, we, we love you. And God, I, I thank you. I got to thank you for your word. And uh, God, uh, it's from you. Uh, God, you, you've given it to us on purpose for a purpose. Um, God, every, every word in it, God, is from you and has an application in our lives. And God, we are better for it as we understand it. But God, if we're going to understand it, you've got to reveal it to us. So God, I pray that we would always approach your word with the spirit of humility, with the spirit of dependency, with the desire to understand it and to understand how it applies to our life, Father. So God, may we join the psalmist in that prayer. God, I, I pray that as, as you reveal truth to us, God, that it would, it would not be flippant in our lives. Uh, God, we would not quickly skip away from what you have said, but instead, Father, we would, we would meditate upon those things. God, that is, uh, that, that is our desire, our prayer. God, I thank you for, uh, God, I thank you for local churches. God, I thank you what you do through them. So, God, I thank you that you uh, have, have called a, a family to Stigler. God, bless them and use them for your glory in that place. God, I know that there are, are churches in, in our area, Father, that, uh, God, they're struggling and they're hurting, Father. Uh, we pray for them. God, give us the wisdom and the understanding of how, God, if it would be your will, how we can come alongside those churches and, and make them healthy. Because, God, there's one kingdom. And Jesus is the king of it. And God, our heart, our desire is for that kingdom to grow. For King Jesus to be lifted high. For hearts and lives to be changed. So, Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is our prayer. We love you. We thank you for the time that we've been able to have this evening. And it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. We are dismissed.